one. All right, Khan. All right, Shalom. Now, first and foremost, we want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Harakakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of GMS, uh, the great millstone who definitely rule well. Peace, love, and salutations to the Bayafta Wada, the house of David. You brothers and sisters is out there uh, watching, listening, and learning. You co laborers out there on the highways and byways, you know, getting busy with us. Um, hastening into the day of the return of our Lord and Savior, whom the world ignorantly calls. Uh, God in Jesus Christ, all right? Um, this is GMS Boston coming with the weekly address, and as always, as the purpose is to edify, and Lord willing, we do. So um, we were just going into the book of Revelation. I actually had a question that was asking me, so I'm going to read this question out. Um, it was a question that was asking to me, and then as I, as I started to get ready to type a response, I'm like, damn, I got to do it. This is, this is I, I can't type all this. I have to do, a, do an audio recording. And as I started to do the auto recorded, the spirit told me, like, look, this is a lesson. Um, I felt it was an edifying question. And not that I felt like it was also the spirit because this is something that I've been meditating on, um, understanding uh, the book of Revelation, you know. And you, you got these scholars and even men, some men amongst the circumcision, they say that it's a real hard book to understand. So um, my suggestion to you is understanding the book of Revelation from my dealings and reading it is understanding who's speaking and when they're speaking. Um, there's an author that's, uh, there's an author that's, um, um, authoring, uh, uh, what's it called? Not an author. Yeah. There's a, there's a, uh, narrating, a, yeah, narrating. a narrator. That's the word, the water brother. There's a narrator that's narrating, um, the book of revelation. And that narrator is not Yahweh Shai. It's not the, it's not John, you know? Um, so, so it's in very, 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 very important to understand when that narrator is speaking, because oftentimes. And not to say that Revelation doesn't jump because it does jump. But oftentimes, as John is saying what he's saying and the angels are jumping every once in a while, Yahweh Shai jumping once in a while, that narrator will come in and kind of tie things all together. And it'll appear that it's going back in time. But just like in the movies, um, a movie that'll start off like with a scene and then they'll be like, I, I know you're wondering how I got here. Right. But just remain calm. And I'm going to show you exactly how I got here. So they went to the beginning of the movie, maybe the end of the movie. At the first, and then they 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 jump back. Um, when you think of the book of Revelation, think of it as a play, right? You have your narrator, and then um, by the by the characters that are in the role, you know, you see the names. And once you could kind of um, get a highlighter and decipher, you know, the voice of Yahweh Shai. Some books have the the red lettering for Yahweh Shai. When John is speaking, uh, when the narrator is speaking, you can navigate more easily or through it. Also. Uh, understanding the differences between the seven plagues, uh, the seven seals, and the seven vows. Sometimes, often, people could confuse them, too, with one another. And then the spiritual aspect, as, as um, like the scriptures say, um, measuring the time diligently in itself. So um, the Bible is a puzzle, right? And, and like we, we often say, sometimes you can't see the, the big picture. You got to take little pieces of the puzzle and put them together slowly but surely and able to be able to see um the bigger picture so without no without um you got a preset bro yeah just real quick just to back you up um yep. I'll, get, I'll get uh isaiah 28 uh verse 9 and 10 and it reads um who shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast for precept must must be upon precept precept upon precept Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Hey, yeah, yeah, pro, beautiful. So, you know, um, them that are weaned from the breast of babies that are entering into this truth that uh, 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 want to obtain knowledge, but precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And what does that mean? Um, you can't read the Bible from front to back like a novel, but the Bible is telling a story. And like the brother uh, uh, Karab beautifully put the settlers, if you stand in a circle, everybody has a different perspective of the same thing. So the scriptures state that, um, you know, everybody's telling a portion or a piece of the story, but it's up to you, to, uh, the reader. That's why the scriptures say, blessed is he that read, um, to put the pieces of the puzzle together to make the complete story. For an example, I don't know, Karab, if you could get this. It tells you in the book of Second Ezra. Um, I believe that's the 12th chapter where it states that um, uh, Ezra says, um, it says like, 
uh, uh, the, the, this vision was shown unto thy brother Daniel, but it wasn't expounded upon him. And when you go into then uh, going to what verse vision, eleven, um, when you go into the vision that Ezra saw, it was very detailed, right? In certain aspects of what, what he seen, but unto Daniel, it was just written as a parable. All you know is a beast came up, and then another beast came up, then another beast came up, right? And 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 that's a that's a mystery. That's a parable. That's a um. A metaphor you got to put that together but ezra was explained it in detail give me what you got corrupt come on this is second ezra uh this is 12 i'm gonna start at verse 10 and he said unto me this is the interpretation of the vision the eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea was the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother daniel but it was not expounded unto him therefore now i declare it unto thee can you look up that word expounded baba kasha Huh. All right. So this this vision that was given to Daniel wasn't expounded unto him. It says, therefore, now I declare to thee. So this is what it means by precept upon precept, line upon line. Go ahead, bro. This is the definition for expound. It says present or explain a theory or idea systematically and in detail. It says, okay. Uh, so it, yep. You got it, bro. It says, it. Yeah, it says explain the meaning of a, lit uh, a literary or doctrinal work. All right, it also says explain, interpret, um, and the first one says present, put forth, set forth, uh, advance, explain, yeah, describe. Con. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Con. So yeah, point taken, right? So let me let me um let me go let me read this question, right? And then we could go to Revelation, the first chapter, because how fitting would it be? You know, we're explaining the book of Revelation, and in and, and, and the first couple of verses, it kind of you you could get the idea if you. If the spirit will allow. Go ahead, Taza. Well, you got it. No, I just wanted to land back kind of because we mentioned that scripture in Ezra's and it spoke about how Daniel did, uh, wasn't able to expound upon it. And then we know in Daniel's, the 12th chapter, it says, oh, Daniel, shut up the words and uh, seal the book until the end. And, you know, knowledge increaseth. You know, it's like sealed until the end time. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, so maybe even Daniel was not meant to see it until... Open until the oh, end. Hey, I know? got a quick precept, real quick. I know that brother. Somebody's, oh, you still there? All right, come on, come on. You, you can finish the point. So as well, you Matter of fact, why don't, why, let's get Daniel to the 12th chapter, right? And then you could go with Romans, the 11th chapter. So let's okay. get, get oh, that towards the wall and Daniel, the 12th chapter. Yeah, yeah. So, yep, yep. I got that. I got two uh, verses in that same chapter Daniel 12, verse 4. Uh, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And oh, then hold I'll jump it there in. real quick, right? Yep. Hold it there real quick, right? Because it says, "But thou, Daniel, right, shut up the words and seal the book." So when it's sealing, right, the Bible has always been around. The Bible never mm -hmm. disappeared. When it talks about the sealing, that's why Yahweh Shai said, "He that have ears to hear, let him hear." It wasn't talking about physical ears. It was talking about spiritual is because even though the people heard what he was saying um or, 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 or they was listening to what he was saying they wasn't hearing what he was saying so you, you your ears have your ears and your eyes have to be blessed to be able to see this um if you could get matthews the 13th chapter real quick and this is what it means to go uh precept upon precept line upon line here a little and there a little yep um in verse nine right Matthew 13 yep. and 9. It says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered me and he answered and said unto them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So well, yeah, why speak? What's a parable? You know, a parable is when you read a, a, a good portion of Revelation 11 chapter for an example, uh, 12 chapter is a parable, right? It's speaking of a dragon, it's speaking of a woman is speaking uh parabolically right mm -hmm. but if you can have the if you can have if you're blessed enough to be able to receive what the heavenly father is saying to you through his prophets give me um amos chapter three verse uh three bubble kasha real quick if you're blessed enough mm -hmm. to be able to, to hear what the what the prophets are saying or what the lord is saying all right to receive it you know then you're a part of the whole for the let that's right uh, Amos 3 and verse 7, right? Yep. It's like you. It says, Sur Surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. 
yet he will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants to prophets. So the prophets are on the highways and byways and the chief place of concourse, as it was written, uh, Proverbs 22. Um, um, I'm, 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 I'm singing, singing this new song, right? Singing the gospel. All right. So without no further ado, let's you I think you had some corrupt you yeah, want to some, get into oh, yep, was that oh, the Romans 11? Yeah, Romans. But I also want to jump and grab uh, Revelation, the fifth chapter, because you mentioned about the seals, too. And it's to yep. show exactly what you're going into about. You got to uptake uh, from once again from Revelation and also see what Daniel is saying and link them together. But it says precept upon precept, line upon line. Right. This is um. Uh, Revelation 5 and 1, and I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, uh, it says, within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel claiming with a loud voice who was worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the sun, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had, pre had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Mm. And I held and lo, in the midst of the throne and the four beasts in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, and this is, uh, which are the seven spirits of the Most High sent forth into all the earth. And that's just the back to point up of you had mentioned about the book being sealed. But it was, a point time, it was a point in time where uh, that book was going to be unsealed and that knowledge was going to uh, flourish because it goes back into it. Um, right. It, was in the, it says knowledge shall be increased. Yeah. Uh, real, right, so quick, me, real quick, real mm quick, -hmm. read the seventh verse, Baba Kasha. I got you. Um, in verse seven, it says, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, uh, four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden bells full of odor, which are the prayers of the saints. And yeah, as, I want you and, to get down to they, nine. Yep. Yep. And they sung a new song, saying, "Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to the Most High by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation." All right. So the and sealing up of the book was, you know, the understanding of what it was. You had a time in which Esau was running amok throughout the earth. What does it say? Job 9 and 24, right? The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. They came with Bibles and 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 and, and swords in their hands, right? The understanding of who we were, we were lost. We had we were falling away. We didn't we we thought we were heathens at one point, right? Now we know that we're of the circumcision. So um I think you had Romans, the eleventh yep, chapter Romans. Yep. Okay. Romans 11, I saw that verse uh, 7. It says, yep. What then? Israel had not attained that which he seeketh for, but the election have, uh, had attained it, and the rest was blinded. Yeah, the rest was is, blinded. Go ahead. As it is written, the Most High had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David said, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. And let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their backs always. Yeah, you know? they're stumbling blocks. See, how shy was a stumbling block, right? The scriptures are a stumbling block, right? A brother could be a stumbling block, right? There are stumbling blocks that are placed before um, certain individuals. Why? Because it wasn't meant for them to get it. The scriptures say, in fact, if there wasn't a stumbling block, they would easily get it. They would easily understand we have to be the children of Israel. They would easily understand, of course, there's a power. Right, of course, the most high exists. Who created this earth? Right, look at the look at the structures of this. Right, of course, yep. we got to follow these laws. These laws make perfect sense. Right, it, it, it would all make sense to them, but there has to be a stumbling block that's placed before them. So, without go ahead, bro, you got it. I was gonna Stop. mention too a, pr a prime example of that is these Christians, you know, as they say, they go they believe in the Bible, they constantly uh go to church every Sunday, but guess what? They still don't have the understanding, especially of this book, Reve uh, the book of Revelation. You know, they'd be Very winging it. Book to understand. Yeah. yeah, they can't even give you the proper breakdown. You'll ask them what the MOTB is, which is in Revelation, the 13th chapter, and they'll tell you something uh, uh, different uh, than what, what, what it says. You know, yeah. they, so, so it just shows you that that knowledge is given unto the elect. It's given unto uh, those who did, did, diligently seek, seek for the information. The studies that show that self-approved. Mm -hmm. right. 
So th- th- I didn't read that that uh that question, question, did I? No, no, you got no, it. Not yet. No, so no, no. Let me read the question, then we'll go right into Revelation, the first chapter. All right. All right. So can you bro- can your brothers hear me? Yeah. Come on. All right, so this is the question, right? The question is, I wanted to know more about the end times. It's constantly on my mind lately, like about the FEMA camps and the microchip. And I know Revelation is a symbolic point. Hey, hey, Zion. And it leads from something. I saw it. It leads from There's like a little static. Can you brothers hear me? Yeah, it started to, as soon, as soon as you started to read, it started to get static. All right, let me, let me, um, all right, so, it, and the question was, she said, I know that the book of Revelation is a, is a symbolic book, and it reads from chapter to chapter. And she was curious about the plagues and when would it happen as if they would happen after the after the implication of the mark of the beast. And if it's a if it's a novel, how do you play it out? Where do you start from? Which I felt was a good question because that's what I've been meditating on spiritually. And and, and so that was the spirit that that question was actually asked. So uh, I don't know if I said this, but um, I, I thought to I thought to the text and then I thought to do a, a voice record and then the spirit jumped on me. To say, hey, let's do a show. Today's Tuesday. I'm with the brothers, you know, out around Ratiza, we 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 lay this out and it's edifying, right? Um, so let's go to Revelation, right? To understand. Now, when you read Revelation one and one, here's the author. Here's the author, not the author. <laughs> I said keep saying that. The um the narrator. narrator okay. This is narrator, and we're gonna prove that it's a narrator because you gotta pay attention to how it uh, how how it uh how it refers to certain individuals, right? And only really Paul, brothers can correct me if I'm mistaken, spoke in third person. But the scripture also said Paul was a hard person to understand. I think that was Peter uh, who said that. He was a hard person to understand. But, you know, the scriptures are not going to talk in uh, third person other than other than that, right? So let's go read Revelation 1 and 1. This is the book of Revelation 1, verse 1. The revelation of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, which the Most High gave unto him, to show unto his servants the thing which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Yeah, so it's tell John is mentioned in here. Mm-hmm. So the narrator is telling you, like, okay, this is the book of Revelation, all right? And that this book, this revelation was sent to John, right? Go ahead. It says, Who bear record of the word of the Most High and of the testimony of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. And of yeah, all so John he- John is a witness because he's just to say he bore a uh, record. All right, of the uh, of the testimony. In order for you to testify, you have to be a what eyewitness. Yeah. So John was there, right? And also, not only was he there when with the Lord on the scene, he um he he was caught up in he was taken up in the spirit. Okay, go ahead. It says, Blessed is he that read it, read it, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, this is important because the scriptures say, Not blessed is he that readeth, right? And he that hear the words. Right, because it goes into um, reading, but hearing the words, me basically understanding it. Because how many so-called Christians read this, but they don't hear the word? Right, mm-hmm. real quick, give me, um, give me John chapter eight, verse forty-two, real quick. John chapter eight, verse forty-two, and check this out. So forty-two. Yep. Come, John chapter eight, uh, verse forty-two, and Yahweh Shai said unto them, If the Most High were your father. Ye will love me, for I proceeded forth and came from the Most High. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? You see what he said? Mm-hmm. Yahweh Shai said unto him, like, if, if the Most High was your father, you would love me. I proceeded and came out of him. Then he said, why mm-hmm. do you not understand my speech, right? Even because you can't hear my word. They was hearing what Yahweh Shah was saying, but what Yahweh Shah was saying is y'all can't grasp what it is that I'm saying. Y'all don't have yeah. enough faith, enough righteousness in you to understand what it is. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you, but it ain't sticking. You believe right? Keep going. It's comprehension. They can't mm-hmm. comprehend. Yeah. Um, verse 44. Uh, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. 
And Which because of I you? tell you the truth, no, no, that's it, bro. And because I tell you yeah, the yeah. truth, you believe me not. Why? Because they're of their father, the devil. Fathers of degenerative. The devil goes back to the deceiver, Satan, the adversary. So no matter how 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 you break it down to them, they ain't gonna get it because they weren't built built to get it. Keep going. Go, go back to Revelation, Bubba Kashar, unless you got something you want to. Yeah, I want I want to uh, grab the definition. Uh, so I can, let me get this definition real quick. Um, comprehend. Because it goes into yep. it says grasp, grasp mentally understand. Mm. So that's 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 exactly what Yahweh Shah was basically saying. Like you don't comprehend the words that's coming out of my mouth. Basically, <laughs> that's exactly right. what he was saying. Uh, are you, oh, hey, I got that? I got that's proverbs the first chapter. I mean, um, hold that real quick, right? Let's go back to because we hammer in this point. But a precept must be on point. Precept, right? Let's go back to Revelation. Right? Said Revelation. Yeah. Got it. Back to verse three. So it says, "Oh, uh, so blessed is he that readeth, right, and mm -hmm. hear the words of this prophecy and keep these things." Because some people they, they they read, you know what I'm saying? They hear, but they don't keep it, right? Keep going. Con. This is verse four. Uh, it says, "John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come from the seven spirits which are before his throne." Yeah, John unto Asia. This is not John speaking, but we know that John received the vision so we gotta again we gotta decipher when john comes into the play right so it's still narrating keep going mm -hmm. and from Yahweh who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood keep going and have, and have made us kings and priests unto the Messiah and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindred of the earth shall will because of him, even so Amen. Amen. Amen, meaning it is done, right? Mm -hmm. So now yeah. you go to the you go to the eighth verse, right? Now, just like that play, there's Yahweh Shai, right? Yeah, Yahweh Shai speaking now. That's yeah. Yahweh Shai speaking, right? As you can see what, is now, he, what, what does he say? It's as it, it's in red letter too, so yep. he, I can you can identify it. I am yep. the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So now, uh, here's the play again. So right next to Revelation 1 and 9, it'll say John. Because now it's John. So if you read in the play, it'll be the next scene. If that's it's, that's it. why it has that, the Patmos vision. Like It's like the next scene or, or the next chapter. Or, you know what yeah. I'm saying? The director will be like, John. He'll point to him like, John, it's your turn. Right? It's your cue. Now, your cue. Now check out the yeah. check out the ninth verse, right? Speaking in first person. Go ahead. I John. Hey, that's awesome. important. You gotta read that slow. I John, so that you can understand, <laughs> right? Yep. I John. Go ahead. I John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patient of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, was in the Isles that is called Patmos for the word of the Most High and for the testimony of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Go ahead. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. I was on the I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. The now, first that, and that's the that quote. See, ain't, quote, no quotation, really? ain't no quotations in, in the Bible, but you have to understand when the Lord is speaking. And this, yeah. this right here, brothers and sisters, is gonna help you be able to navigate and understand the book of Revelation better, knowing when who's speaking. Go ahead. It says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and, of, and unto Smyrna, and unto uh, Pagamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and, uh, and unto uh, Laodiceus. All right, it says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven, seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven golden seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were, were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burnt in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So the Lord was a dark-skinned man, right? That's, That's right. describing, this is John's vision of the Lord. He's describing them, right? Woolly hair, dark skin, right? But even like you said about the play, right? You gotta visualize what's taking place. As he said, he heard a voice behind him. He turned around, and this mm -hmm. is why it's important. Why he gave the description of what he saw, 
Right. You know, he said, I heard a voice. So I look back and, oh, this is what I seen. So, right. you know, you got to, once again, you got to apply all of that into it to get a better understanding. Right. It says, um, verse 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth on a sharp two-edged sword. His countenance was on the sun as the sun shining in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid up, laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things uh, which shall be hereafter. The mysteries of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which are which thou saw are the seven churches. So that's a key, right? You know when you have a cold, um, or or they will have like the keys down. So mm -hmm. when you see them seven stars, it's telling you what these stars are. The seven stars, all right. It it, it says the mystery of the seven stars which thou saw in the right hand, right, and the seven golden candlesticks, right. The seven stars are the angels. Of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the churches. Mm -hmm. So of uh, 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 the candlesticks, uh, uh, which holds candles. So they're the churches. Slakia, they represent the churches, but the stars represent the angels, which will be in the midst of these churches. So the heavenly mm -hmm. Father set these angels in the midst of every last one of these churches. Okay, so now um, just to you know, uh, just to him that, just to him that point home. Um, that that right there, that I pray that that gives you like a better understanding on on how to read. So mm -hmm. often when you read, it, it the narrator comes in and it'll kind of wrap it all up. You know what I'm saying? In synopsis, if you will, a brief synopsis. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and the story will continue to go on. Um, I don't know if your brothers have anything. No, nah, I'm, I'm not not at this moment. Okay. Um. Let me uh, let's go to the, I want to just make one, one example of the angels. So go to Revelation 9 okay. and 1. I want to make an example of the angels coming into play, right? Concerning the trumpets. Mm -hmm. This is Revelation 9 and 1. In the fifth, yeah, so sound. here's the author, uh, here's the uh, the narrator, right? The narrator mm -hmm. says, In the fifth angel sounded, right? Mm -hmm. And now, John, after the fifth angel sounded, John is saying, And I saw a star far from heaven, you know what I'm saying. Read that again. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he yeah, opened so that's the another example. Yeah, so that's another example of 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 um another example of basically the coding. Now go to Revelation the sixth chapter real quick. Because we made mention of the vows, we made mention of the plagues, and we made mention of the seals, right? And now now these things are not happening. They're all not the same, but what's happening is they're being recorded at different events. And before you go to Revelation, the 16th chapter, go to 2nd Ezra, the 9th chapter real quick. So 2nd Ezra, the 9th? Yep. 9 and 1. 9 and 1. Yep. 2nd uh, yep. Ezra, 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest parts of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Keep going. Yep. Verse three. There, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is ma manifest. Go to Even so, Ezra, the times six. also of the highest. Go to Second Ezra chapter yep. six, uh, verse see. six, because it said he answered and yep. said, measure, "Measure thou the time diligent in, in itself." Right. So, how do we know when the end is going to come? The heavenly Father gave us clues, and He said certain events will be happening. You can't measure time with a ruler. Time is space and matter. So what we're measuring is the prophecies that take place. Because we know that this has to happen like a domino effect. In order for that to happen, this has to happen, right? As second um, as six first 
Second Ezra six, six. verse six. Huh. Yep. Um, second Ezra six, yep. verse six. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. By me also they shall be ended, and by none other. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So uh, the hand we're of in? we're living at the end. We're living at the end of Esau's world and the beginning of Jacob's world. Simultaneously, kingdoms rise and fall at the same time. So at the time of the uh, Assyrians, when the Assyrians was at the height of their empire, there was a noise of the Babylonians, right? The, 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 the uh, Persians didn't just take over the Babylonians overnight. You know what I'm saying? The Persians was, and, and the Medes were, were squabbling back and forth, and they joined forces together to take down the Babylonian empire, right? Greece was making noise uh, while, uh, while the Persian Empire was at its height. That's how the Heavenly Father does things. So while he's rising up the tabernacles of David, right, uh, with the elect men, as we start to come into this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, as we start to grow into the spirit, what's he doing? As he's giving wisdom, all right, to the elect through the spirit and power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? He's, he's, he's depriving Esau of wisdom. When you go to yeah. the book of Obadiah, Chapter one, um, get that for me real quick. Um, but can I can I mention, can I mention something real quick too? Yeah, go ahead, to bro. Back to the point. Uh, this is as you see, there's a cons there's a consistent pattern in the scriptures where the prophets and the men of the Lord always inquired about that time. Yeah. In the, uh, the book of Matthew, you have also uh um in uh as we read in Second Ezra, you know uh also in, in the book yeah, in the book of Luke, also in the book of Acts, the first chapter. When they asked, Lord, are you come to restore the kingdom back unto Israel? There was always that pattern happening. So you got to get that understanding as well in that sense. But just to back right. that brother up or not. This is this is something we yearn for, going back to the promise that was given to Abraham, given to Isaac, yeah. given to Jacob, yeah. that, the, that Yahshua Allah will rule the earth in righteousness. You know, it's mm -hmm. been a long time coming. It's not just us in this lifetime and, 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 and these bodies and this uh, I won't say the spirit because the spirit lives continuously, but this has been a long time coming. This is centuries and decades and lifetimes of 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 yearning and hastening and one. Even going back to the disciples, um, after the departure of Yahweh when he came back, they said, "Lord, are thou now going to restore the kingdom of heaven?" You yep. know, did they think that the two thousand years would go by and we'll still be doing this? No, they probably didn't, right? Because uh -huh. technically, we've been living in the last days since the birth of Yahweh but we're still waiting and we're still hastening. Because even when you read the book of Daniel, I believe it's the seventh chapter when it goes into those the four different beasts that has to play out as well. So it goes into what those visions uh, are coming to pass. It says, uh, um, what's that Habakkuk uh, two and three? Uh, the vision is yet uh, yeah, for a point in time. Yep. That shall speak and not lie. This yep. is something that we always been waiting for. Our forefathers yep. been waiting, for, and even to us at this very day. That's why we're paying attention. So when you read, you gotta like you said, you have to uh, uh, allow. Uh, you know, basically put the the, the, the the events that's taking place and measure it according to what's happening in the society and in the world. You know, real quick, just one I got one quick one and, and just to land back. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 17. Yep. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Go back to Obadiah one and five. Yep, Six. I got like you. Six. This is uh, Obadiah 1 and 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? And how are his hidden things sought up? All yeah, the jump down to 8. Okay, come on. Verse 8. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of Mount of Esau? Go to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Uh, in the Bible, not the Apocrypha. Okay, come on. Ecclesiastes, oh, Ecclesiastes. 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. This is, continue on. Yep. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. 
a time to cast away stones, a a time to kill and a time to heal, right? Mm -hmm. So it says to heal, right? A time to break down and a time to build up. When you go into Amos the ninth chapter, right? What does that say? What is what is is that Amos nine, right? Yep. What's being broken down? America, Babylon, wickedness, the society, mm -hmm. Esau's kingdom, Esau's rule. Mm -hmm. But what's being built up? Amos 9 and 11. Yeah. Amos 9 and 11. In that day will I rise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and Somebody, close up the, yep. the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. That's what's happening, right? Go back to um to Ecclesiastes the third chapter. Ecclesiastes 3 um, in verse 5 again. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Yes, yeah, so there's a time, there's a certain time underneath the heaven for everything. Yeah. Right? Right, so that's what you got to measure the time. Mm -hmm. It's a time of a great awakening. Your brother, your brother, hold down the foot. Come on, come on. All right, uh -huh. so I'm gonna continue on. It says, "Uh, what profit had he that worketh in in that wherein he labored? I have seen the travails which the Most High had given to the sons of men to be exercising." But this is the, also going into the point. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their in their hearts. So that no man can find out the works of the most the, that the most high make it from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. All right. So hey man, it's so, telling you what hey, slack it, bro. Slack, mm -hmm. slack it, brother. Karab, before I go, yeah, go read, read get rev uh um I uh second Ezra the 15 chapter, right? And break that on down. Um, because it because through the spirit it goes into what we're talking about, you know, the vision, you know, prophesying it, speaking it to people. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into the end times because that, that kind of answers the question as far as what's going to happen, how it's going to play out, you know what I'm saying? And just understanding the book of Revelation and it'll kind of tie that all up so that, you know, you brothers, and you brothers do your thing, man. I don't want this, I'll catch it with you brothers. Shalom. 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 Yeah, Shalom. 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 yeah, I got that corrupt. All right, come on. Uh, second Ezra is uh, 15 verse 1. Uh, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. Real quick, yeah. can, can I mention something on that? Because it says, speak down the ism of people, the words of prophecy. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to grab a quick precept just to back you up. Because it's again, you know, understanding Revelation, you got to kind of link it to all these other uh, the, the, the other books as well that is provided. This is Revelation mm -hmm. 11, 19 and 10. It says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. He said unto me, see thou doest not. I am thy fellow servant in the, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh for the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. All right. That's that same, that's that same uh that same spirit that the Lord had given us uh by also uh breaking the seal, the understanding yep. to know the prophecies, all right, to, to, to push this information on our people to give them the warning. All right, yep. yeah. Even when uh when we were reading our uh, second Ezra, the ninth chapter, if we go over to the chapter before the last few verses on uh second Ezra chapter eight and uh 60, 61, 62. You know, the, the judgment of the Lord is now at hand. And Ezra was acquiring, and, and the Lord told him to seek out men that be just like him. And it's not given to all men. So that's why everybody can't understand the, these breakdowns, understand Genesis, understand the book of Revelation, because it was only given to a certain few, to the, the servants, the prophets, man. And that's how you know, if you have that spirit of prophecy, you have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, man. That's right. That's right. Huh. Huh. So uh, uh, back in Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, uh, verse 2, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Uh, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. All right. And there's, and there's, and there's a, 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 a reward for, for those that lack understanding. All right, there's, there's, there's a reward for those that, that, that shun the words of Yahweh Bashim El Shah, and that reward is what death. All yeah. right, this is for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. All right, why? And another thing, too, because if you're not paying attention to the prophecies and the, and the things that's happening in the world, you're going to get caught in, caught up in it. All yeah. right, 
That's why the scripture says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because what's going to take place is the Lord is destroying this world. All right. And if you're not paying attention, if you don't have the eye salve, if you're not, if you're not leaning on the testimony of Yahweh Shah, then guess what? You're a part of the problem. You're going to get yeah. caught up in that wave. All right. Which is that utter destruction because it says uh, the world's going to perish. All right. Yeah. No, just to, just to land back uh, before uh, the, the Lord uh, execute his judgment on older kingdoms. And just like in this uh, sinful kingdom, there was always a task of his servants, the prophets giving warning. And this is why it always will lead with the, the prophets uh, speaking his words, giving warning, and then the plagues are going to come because the Lord will send his seers first to give the people the warning before it takes place, man. So there's no excuse that you have never heard. It can't catch you off guard because there's a way, avenue that the Lord has called on to you, you know, but it's, it's, it's up to for you to receive it, you know. Uh -huh. I was going to also mention, too, because you um, mentioned it, you referenced uh, Jeremiah 28 and 8 about the yep. prophet speaking against these uh, many kingdoms. It's the same that we're doing now because, you know, mm -hmm. that question going back into the events that's happened in the Revelations. All right. This is the same reason why we're here to tell our people not to receive the MOTV, to give the warning of Esau's wickedness and their and their and their, and their uh, deceptive plans that they're pushing out on the world before it actually come into play. Because in come. Revelation, it tells you that it's going to take place. These things is going to happen. All right. But once again, we're here to to, to 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 speak it and tell our people, hey, this not to do this, you know, not to do that, not to uh, fall for the snares. You know. Yeah. So it's going back to that. Point. I don't know if you if you want to get it. You know, if you want to get Jeremiah twenty eight, you know. Twenty-eight. Yep, I got you. I think it's uh, verse seven, I believe. Yep. Um, nevertheless, Jeremiah twenty-eight and seven. This is nevertheless, thou hear thou now this word that I speak in the ears and in the ears of all the people. It goes back to the same. Speak thou the ears of my people, the words of prophecy, right? No, no. Prophecy, if you have an ear, let them hear. You right? know, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Yeah, right. there's nothing there's nothing new under the sun again it goes back to that's the testimony of yahweh shai man that spirit of prophecy you know of uh, prophesying of many great kingdoms of war and of evil and pestilence and that's also gonna be this is what our job is to 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 prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, man. And this is why things is happening at a rapid rate, because ultimately, once the elect are sealed, then the destruction comes, man. Right, Con. But uh, you want to go, go back to uh, second Ezra 15, correct? Yep, Con. All right, so we left off at, uh, I just finished, oh, I'll read verse 4 again. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Verse 5, Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world the sword, famine, death, and destruction for oh. wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Con, if I may mention too, because when you go back to, I believe it was Revelation, the sixth chapter, right? Just as it mentioned about uh, the Lord bringing those plagues, when you read okay. about, as you can see, uh, a war, right? All right, it says the second seal, it says famine. All right, it says death. These are things that is coming about, that's taking hold of the earth, yeah. all right? So once again, you... It is you, you connect the two, you connect the two books, you connect these, like you said, they coexist line mm -hmm. upon line to hear a little, there a little. You can see where it's being spoken of here in Revelation, but when we go into Second Ezra, you get a more in depth detail. Right, I'm gonna read yeah. um, verse uh, uh, five, Revelation six and five, and it says, And he had a, and he had opened the third seal, and I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I behold, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pillar, a slock, and had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four be say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when it goes into that 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 penny, it goes into a day's wage. All right. It goes into a day's wage. So think about how much an individual will get paid for a day, accumulating all those hours. So you think about buying rice for that amount. All right. Inflation. Or, or, you know what I'm saying? And, and inflation also takes place. Uh, uh, what also happens in inflation is if there's a, a shortage of an item, the prices of things shoot up. So, hey, man, you're going you're gonna to get that as well when we read uh, Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. Yeah, that's right. Bro. Come on. Yeah. You continue out. Yeah, come on. Uh, Second Ezra, 15, verse 7. Therefore, uh, said the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. 
Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cry unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And therefore, said the Lord, I will surely avenge them and, and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So I, I got two precepts to back that up, right? Yep. I got I got I got um Ezekiel nine nine and four right and also Revelation when it talks about those 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 those, those spirits crying out you know what mm -hmm. saying? in the heavens right I got, yeah. I got um you want to get uh, Ezekiel nine you want to read I got you I, I got you Ezekiel nine verse four and it's, and it reads uh, and the Lord said unto him go through the midst of the city uh, through the midst of Jerusalem. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the room. Mm -hmm. And hey, if I may add, that goes on to this is a, a, a commandment or a job task that the Lord set to his servants, the prophets, man, to go uh, to the midst of the city in the city of Jer in the midst of Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem is a people before a place, the Israelites, and set a mark. You know, you got to go into uh, uh, the 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 entomology or the definition of the word mark, you know, is the wa, which is exemption of, 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 of judgment. You know, this is the actual spiritual mark that you want from uh, to receive from the heavenly father and his only begotten son. Uh, so you won't uh, be hit with those plagues or receive uh, death, man. You know, set a mark upon those men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of those that's fed up with the wickedness of this of this world, man. That's right, and that's here. That's that's here on on the earth, right? As as, mm -hmm. as 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 men are prophesying and declaring the wickedness that's going on, and, and telling our people to, to 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 repent and wake up. But you also have uh, uh I couldn't find it, but I, I'll probably put it in the description box um at, at the end, right? But um when it talks about those in the heaven that's crying out unto the Lord, talking about how long, man? How long until you avenge us, man? You see, so it's showing you as, as, as Second Ezra had mentioned. The, the righteous and innocent blood, uh, uh, basically, and these and the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complained continually. It, it's, 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 it's laid out right there. So once again, you you seeing that you seeing the parallels, all right? You seeing the parallels, and the Most High said He's going to surely avenge them, all right? And it's also written in the Book of Matthew about the uh, 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 what say at the unjust king with that widow that was that was that was constantly uh, uh, asking for help or asking to avenge, and the Lord said He's going to surely do it. All right. Well, you're not referring to our uh, Revelation, the 14th chapter, verse 13, right? Um, grab it. What does it say? Let me see. Revelation 14, 13. Oh, uh, no, nah, not, not that okay. one. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's not, that's not it. Um, yeah. now nah, you can, if you can go back to second Ezra, you can read it. I'll probably look a little bit more. Uh, second Ezra uh, 15 and uh, verse 10. Uh, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with the plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and the punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. Uh, I think I found it real quick. No, Salaki. Con. Salaki. I think it's Revelations. Yep, yep, Khan. Revelations, it was in the sixth chapter. It says, okay. Revelation 6 and start at verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the I saw under the altar the souls of them which were slain for the word of the Most High and for the testimony which they had held. And they cried mm -hmm. with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Yeah, he's talking about the martyrs, man. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, hey, just once again, the Lord said that He's going to avenge those that 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 that's continue uh, complaining continually, and those righteous blood that 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 died laying down their life doing this work, man. Hey, uh, and you can use you can use that with First uh, Thessalonians four and seventeen, man. Those righteous souls that may have been martyrs and died under Yahweh Shai, there's a reward, yeah. you know. First uh, Thessalonians four, and I'll, I'll get uh, verse seventeen. Then we which are a lot, matter of fact, uh, verse 16, Salakia, uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Yahweh shall rise first. Mm -hmm. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. right. Just wanted to land back like those that are sighing and crying. So when you, you know you do this work, we have a brother that has passed, you know, and he, uh, Rayam, used to always say, just let the war, uh, the, the 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 work of the will of the Lord be done. Right. You know, we believe because he is doing this work that he we, we will, you know, he's gonna be uh first with the hour shy in the chariots, man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And he's sighing and crying, man. You get he goes up to the heavenly father, and now you got this truth, and now you just want the Lord's will to be done. You want the Lord to hurry up and prevent uh, uh avenge for the uh the, the remainder that's the uh the uh the, the elect, man. That's right, huh? Huh? So let's go back. Um, what was we at? Um, uh, second Ezra fifteen, right? Yeah, fifteen and uh, eleven. Uh, yeah, we get, we start at eleven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I will bring them with the mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with the plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Right. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. Uh, they that till the ground shall mourn. For their seed shall fall, fail, uh, through the blasting and hail, and with a fearful constellation. That's right. Woe unto, yep. I was going to say, too, because it goes back to the, as we had mentioned earlier about, um, you know, a play. And also visualizing what, you, uh, what you're reading. Because, you know, this is going to be a reality real soon. All right. And, and it says that, um, it says, they that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and the hail. And with fearful constellation. So as 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 it, it's happening at this very moment, but once mm -hmm. again, you, we we know that it's going to intensify. Yeah, uh, it's going to get much more worse. And you know, with that coming into play, it, at this very moment, we can see that all right, it's happening, but it's not to that that peak. All right, yeah. what you do you apply vision to it. All right, you apply vision to see. All right, it's going to talk about how the world's going to be. Uh, this is uh, uh, for the sword and the destruction draw off nine. And people killing each other and fighting against each other. All right, it's not happening now. All right, but once again, it's gonna it's gonna consume the earth. This is what the Most High is bringing. And once again, it's the same concept that's happening in the Book of Revelation. All right, that's right. same thing. He's speaking of things that's gonna happen, but you have to apply that vision. All right, and and also once again, comprehension of what you're reading. All right, to 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 make it make sense. All right, if you lack, if you don't, if you don't have that. Um, it says the scripture says when there's no vision, the people perish. If you don't have that vision, if you don't have that understanding of what, what you're reading, you're literally going to, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's doing you a disservice. It's not going to help you out. Well. All right. What you got, it, brother? Con, uh, verse 14. Uh, Woe unto the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw off nigh. Mm -hmm. And one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of lack of <clears throat> because of lack of bread and for great tribulation. That's right. So with that, right? Let's go to uh, Revelation 16. Revelation 16. I would like to start at verse 17. All right. I, I, can, I can read it. All right. It says, uh, yeah. Revelation 16. I mean, it's a lot. Like Second Ezra 16 and verse 17. It says, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? All right. It says, uh, The beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of. You said the second Ezra, right? Yep, second Ezra. 16. Oh, okay. You said Revelation. Okay, okay, come, come. All right. All right. Uh, it says the beginning of evils. What shall I do uh, when these evils shall come? And what I want to grab real quick is Matthew the twenty fourth chapter. Right. It's talking about the beginning of uh, Salah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the beginning of sorrows. Yep. Yeah. Matthew twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Come, start at verse three. Yep, Matthew twenty four, verse three. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed, and shall deceive many. 
and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. As we just read, all right, as we just read in Second Ezra 16 and verse 17 and 18. All right. I'm going to jump down to 19. It says, Behold, famine and plagues, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. All right. For all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be mindful of the scourges. All right. And when you read Revelation, the 16th chapter, it kind of goes into it as well. Because I'm going to just read one. Right. I'm going to read one real quick. Uh, verse 8. This is, this is once again, you got to understand, you got to put in perspective of time period, right? And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power, the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of the Most High, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. All right? So as you see, these people are not going to repent, just the same way it mentions about they're not going to turn from their wickedness. Yeah, even second Ezra, it's the ninth chapter. Yep. They should fill it by death by pain. And yeah. exactly. They're not gonna they're not gonna be always mindful of the scourges. Mm -hmm. All right. They're gonna they're gonna continue to be wicked and continue to come in that mindset. All right. So hey man, this this is showing you once again, and this is this has been the, 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 the theme of this uh lesson is to get understanding, you have to apply a uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, because the story is very consistent. The Bible is very consistent. The prophets mm -hmm. are all seeing the same events. But they're just telling you in different, in different, uh, in, in different uh, ways that they understand it. Yeah, different, different perspective. There you go. Yeah. Uh, verse, uh, verse, uh, twenty-one. Behold, victory shall be so good, cheap upon earth that they should think themselves to be in a good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. It says, mm -hmm. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. And the, and the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. All right? And um, I want to jump down. You know, um, yeah, let me jump down to verse 37. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As a woman with child in the ninth month, bringing forth her son, with two or three hours of her birth pain, can pass her womb with pains. When the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. That goes back into what, what, what second Ezra six and six when it says, The world was made by me, and through me alone it should be ended. Yep, right? yep. So it's showing you what, what the most high uh, uh what's that precept? Um uh what's um, slack here. Yeah. Back oh, Isaiah 55 and uh, 11. Yep, yep, uh, 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 yep. I think it's Isaiah 55. I just, yep, yep, yep. There you go. Yep, mm -hmm. the water, brother. It says, mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Mm -hmm. so the Lord said, This is the appointed time for this plague to hit. Hey, listen, it's gonna, it's gonna do exactly what it's set up to do. Once again, you can go into Ecclesiastic as the book of Sirach 39 and 28 as what? Yeah. The spirits created for vengeance. All right? The spirits that are created for vengeance. But once again, we're going into these plagues. And once the Lord speak that, once the Lord said, this is that point in time for all these plagues to consume the earth, hey, best believe you're going to know that time when all these plagues is fully active. All right? Yeah. Um, it also goes into, uh, oh, him, uh, oh, my people, hear, the, hear my words, make you ready to thy battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. All right. Yeah, this is why you gotta be circumspect, man. As the scripture says, man, be uh, circumspect and knowing that the days of evil draw off nigh, man. And that's also measuring the time diligently, yeah. uh, being occupied in prophecy. You know, and this is you, you, you can read the Bible again as a novel because there is stories and accounts, but you gotta understand the the like. And they say like the Easter eggs, like in a movie or in a video game. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, 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 a hidden gem. A message, a hidden message or message within the message, man. You know, that's right. Um, it's the same for that. Uh, it says a story uh, within a story. I forgot yeah. what it's called. I, I can look it up real quick. Um, 
to like reveal with me. Because that's it says um a story within a story also referred to as an embedded narrative is a mm -hmm. literary device in which a character within a story becomes the narrator of a secondary story within the first one. And mm -hmm. the Bible does that. Yeah, and multiple the narratives, yeah. And the scripture does that. So you know, just to understand that as well, there's a story within the story, mm -hmm. you know. And when you get to, like you said, the hidden gem, that hope that that connects you to a, a lot of other hidden gems as well. Like, oh, now this makes sense. This goes with yeah. this. It's kind of like unlocking a seal, yep. you know that, yep. you know. Yep. It says mm -hmm. um, that the Lord was gonna come in and sup with you. All right. Mm -hmm. He's gonna give you that understanding. Sometimes it'll dawn on you in the midst of you just going about your day, not even thinking about scripture. You yeah. know, that hidden gem it hits you like, oh snap! And then you find yourself digging back into the scripture right after you get that hidden gem. Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. So um, yep. We just it's like it's like uh it's like that scene in the Matrix, man. It says take the red pill or the blue pill. Mm -hmm. I think if you said take that red pill, you see how far that rabbit hole goes, man. Yeah. Huh. You know, and this that's why this book is always forever living. You know, right. there's always something to find out, something to uh, a a new revelation. You know, but it always fits and ties up with all the prophets' accounts that led to prop that leads to prophecy, man. That's right. That's right. Um, this is uh, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump further down the verse 67. This is Second Ezra 6, 16 to 6, 67. Behold, Yahweh Bashim Hashem himself is the judge. Fear him and leave off from your sin, and forget uh, and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them, forever. So shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all your troubles. Let me grab a quick precept. Um, Revelation is the third, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, second, yep. Um, yep. It says, um, right here, no, oh, Salak, it's Salak. I think it's uh, Revelation 16 when it says, um, keeping your garment. Revelation 16 and right here. It said, uh, Revelation 16 and 15, it says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watch it and keep it his garment. We see walk naked and they shall see a shame. And that goes into that garment representing that covering. All right. And how do you get that covering? By applying the, uh, the scriptures to your life, by turning from wickedness and, and seeking Yahweh about Shah. All right. Uh, since, with, with sincerity and with truth. All right. That's how you keep the garments on. All right. Just like I said, not to meddle no more with sin or your iniquities. All right. And then he's going to lead you forth and deliver you out of trouble. But for those that are naked, this is that they shall see a shame. All right. That's going to come by way of what? The recompense or the, 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 the reward of those being wicked. All right. Mm -hmm. So going back, it says, um, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And it. And it says, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you idol being with things offered unto idols. I'm gonna bring, get another piece up, Revelation 12. Yep. 12. Even Revelation 12, Jeremiah, the 30th, Jacob's trouble. This is a part of that time, man. Huh? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Therefore, rejoice ye heaven and ye that dwell in the woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that ye have but a short time. You see? Mm -hmm. The devil coming down having great wrath because eventually what he's going to do is he's literally going to allow the, the, the floodgates to be open. All right. He's going to allow his military. He's going to have his troops, his foot soldiers, those that are working for that, that system, right, the beast system, to come and try to actually do exactly what Esau uh, uh, wants to do because he know that, that, that his, his time is short. All yeah, right. Especially those that fear the Lord, as you're going to get into it in the second of 16, man. Right? That's right. That also will lead the results of some of those that's being martyrs, as we brought out, yep. you know, and then Revelation, the 20th chapter, verse four, you know, there's, you know, that's all the cause and effect of the devil coming down, having great wrath, man, for not receiving that MOTB or falling, uh, uh, worshiping that, that's the B system. That's right, Con, because it says they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. And when you talk about taking away certain of you, would that, that can allude to what? Uh, being locked in prison, yep, right, or concentration camps, as we also call them, right? Yep, yep. Hey, and that goes in with uh, Salaki, bro. Uh, oh, you, got it. you got it. Uh, that Luke, Luke spoke on it 20 yep. the uh, and Matthew, and you know, uh, you should be brought into the front of their prisoners and, and, and the synagogues in front of their rulers, you know. 
See right here, Revelations 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast mm -hmm. away prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation, tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. All right. So it's telling you, hey, don't 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 fall for the antics, don't fall for Esau's bullcrap. All right. Because guess what? They're gonna take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. What is that? Let's grab another precept. Revelation 13. Right and 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And anything that's worshipped outside of Yahweh Bashim al Shai is known as a what? As an idol. Yep. All right? It's an idol. So this is going to take take some of you away and feed you with things offered unto idols, right? So it says, worship the image of the beast that they should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right? So what Esau is trying to do is to have you become a perpetual slave. By receiving yeah. his, his 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 incision, all right, the karagma, right. Going back to verse sixty nine, and they that consent unto them, which you're going to have people that receive that, shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot, all right. So guess what? They're going to get the short end of the stick, regardless. Yeah, it <laughs> says, uh, "He that saveth his life shall lose of his life, man." Right? You know? uh, but he that loseth his life for the Lord's name's sake shall shall find it. You know. Revelation 16 and verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vials upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and a grievous sore upon them which had the mark of the beast upon them which worship his image. So, hey, listen, they're showing you that they're going to be having great uh, in derision. They're going to be, be receiving, uh, 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 once again, uh, uh, of, of the, the unfruitful deeds that they're pushing, that they're doing. All right. Esau's going to do them bad. And, and let's guess what? The Lord is going to allow things to happen unto them as well. That's All right. right. I did a um quick uh quick uh thing. Uh, I did a lesson going into this lady that received the mark, but eventually she started speaking out against uh you know Esau's power structure and they shut it off. So she couldn't buy or sell, she couldn't do nothing, and she had it. So she what she did was she was that was a snare that she she basically uh fell into because mm -hmm. now she can't repent from that. You get what I'm saying? Not so mm -hmm. if she was an Israelite or she was a heathen, uh you know, I, I'm not too sure, but once again, it's the purpose of she received that mark. And guess what? It still it's, was happening. Yeah, it's eternal it. damnation, you know? Yeah. She can do nothing with it. Yeah. And I think that's what Aaron Russo also mentioned. About if you disobey, if you come up or you, you're you not following the ways that they want, they can just shut it off. And now you're yeah. suffering. All right? But going back, verse 69 again. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden on the foot. It says, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord, that they shall be like madmen, spare none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. All right. And like you had mentioned about the martyrs, about the martyrs, you're going to have men that die for this truth. All right. It says, for they shall uh, shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. And they shall, it says, then shall they be known who are my children and they shall be tried as, as, as the gold in the fire. Yeah, hear ye, hope here, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. And that going back to you know Jacob's trouble, uh, Jeremiah the thirtieth chapter. You can also get that also in uh, the Daniel's uh, the twelfth chapter. Right. You know, when a time of trouble, but there's always uh, the Lord's gonna find a way to deliver His elect, man. Come on, and I got a precept for you on that one. Let me just finish this up. It says, okay. be not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your God, and the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Shah, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquity lift up themselves. So I got mm -hmm. two, I got uh, two more real quick. We can end it off on that. Um, Revelation 12, and I'm going to start at verse 10. All right. And it says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power and the power of his anointing. And the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. All right. So that shows that the, 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 these, these, the elect is going to have a particular mindset that's going to keep them near. Yahweh Just like in the book of, uh, I believe it's Romans. Um, is it Romans? I believe when it says, um, what shall basically separate us from the love of the most high? 
Yep, yep, yep. Romans uh eight chapter, I believe. Yep, eight chapter. And also let me grab this, Revelation three and verse ten. And it says this, um, because thou hast kept the words of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, we just want to grab this. Um, yes, the eighth chapter, if you want to get that. Come on, come on. I will also keep. All right. So I want to get the definition for the word keep. All right. And it says to attend to carefully, taking care of, to guard. Just like it says to be a guide unto them which keep my commandments and precepts. Metaphor to keep one, one in the state in which he is, to observe, to reserve, to undergo something. You see? So hey man, it's all it's all lining up, it's all linking yeah. up. Hold fast. To reserve endure, to, endure to the end. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you said Romans, right? Yeah, I got it. Uh Romans eight. I'll start at 31 and read down, and you know, if you want to break it down. Uh, uh Romans 8, 31. Um, what shall we? Then say to these things, if the Most High be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Mm -hmm. Who shall lay anything to the charge of, of the Most High's elect? Is it the Most High that justifies? Who is he that condemneth? Is it the uh, Yahweh Shai that died? Yeah, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of the Most High, who also maketh in a, in a intercession for us. Mm -hmm. Who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh Shai? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it was written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Uh, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are moved than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of the Most High, which is in Yahweh Mashiach, our Lord. There you go. All right. That's Yahweh Shah shedding the blood for, for the elect. All right, primarily you say Israel, but primarily of the elect. All right, because the elect is going to be justified, the elect is going to be made clean and have white robes. All right, and this is another reason why you can you can uh read Revelation the fifth chapter and understand why it was important, why he wept, you know, because without that blood, look, you know, we covered, you know, the elect is covered because of the blood of what the act that Yahweh did, man. So we have received the understanding, but we also have received. That 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 mercy, all right. That 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 thing that ties us back into the Most High, man. That's Yahweh Shai is the bridge. He brought us back to the Most High. This is how we know that we Israelites now again. This is how we know that the prophecies and the understanding of these prophecies, all right. This is how we know how to deal amongst each other. You know, this is how we know that what's to come and how to maneuver and how to act in these times to come, and yeah. also know who salvation is for and and how we're gonna be delivered. You know, once right. again, it was all given because of Yahweh Shah uh, uh, laying down his life for the nation of Israel. All right. Which was which was ultimately the purpose because the Most High has sent him to do so. Man. All right. So mm. once again, once again, uh, like you, you want to bring that precept out one more time? Uh, precept upon precept. Oh, yeah. yeah. Isaiah, yeah. Isaiah 28. Uh, so like, like, like the brother Zion said, we hope that this is uh, 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 helpful. And when you're doing your studies or you're reading and just to get understanding of, of what's going on in, in, in the book of Revelation, but in all books. All right. Yeah. In all the books and all the chapters, you know, uh, when you go from the Apocrypha to the, the, the Bible, you know, you want to make sure that you get uh, uh, the, the proper understanding by connecting the dots, connecting uh, precept upon precept. But you got to. Yeah, and if, it, if I may add, it takes time. You know, yeah. you can't just come into this thing and then get all the breakdowns, get all, you know, yeah. that's why when I read it, you know, when I read this uh, last scripture, you know, you got to start with the milk and then eventually you'll grow. You know, a baby can't just start eating steak, you know, or meat. It has to be weaned from the milk. So I'll get it. Uh, Isaiah 28, verse uh, 9 and uh, 10. And it reads, uh, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, 
if I may but, mention real quick, Salaki, brother, I don't mean to cut you off, but like also, like you said, it takes time. It's like you have to allow the scriptures to sup, like set in. You know, you have to allow it to set in, and uh, uh and, you know, do do what it's supposed to do, marinate. All right, because if you don't, then that's literally you uh jumping the gun. You know, yeah, you're yeah. Jumping, or leaning onto your own understanding, and you don't want to do that. Uh, by for, by forcing the story or forcing something to come about, you don't want that. You want it to people be presented to you, and then you accept it instead of kind of like forcing your own uh your own ideas of your own thoughts uh onto what is being said. If you get where I'm going with it, huh? Mm huh? -hmm. Uh, verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Right. And it just says precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line, line, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. I'm showing that you got to bounce around. All right. Once again, and once you do that, you bounce around and get get the, uh, these different precepts, you, you, you realize that, hey, man, the prophets and all these books and these chapters is saying Sim similar things, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's the same story. It's the same thing all throughout. All right. And once again, this is what the Christian lack. This is what people that pick up the Bible or, you know what I'm saying, uh, first time and they think they know something. This is what they lack, you know, because they're not allowing uh, the story to be presented, man. They're not allowing things to, to make sense, <laughs> you know. But once again, the scripture says the elect have received it, but the rest was blinded. So if you're not of the elect, you, you're not going to be able to see it. And the scriptures, I, I don't know exactly, but just to paraphrase, there's no private interpretation. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's all given through the holy, through Yahweh Hashem Al Shah, through the Spirit, man. That's right. You know? uh -huh. well, that's it on my end. You got anything else? Yeah, that's it, brother. You can close up. Con, con. So with that, we pray and hope that this lesson was edifying. You know, we want to give all praises on the glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, and Akadash. Double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and have started this truth. And also peace and salutation to the whole for the elect. I will labor in truth and sincerity in four corners of the earth, understanding and the benefit of Yahweh Bahashim El Shah. And with that, we want to say Shalom. Shalom. Baba Ba. Baba Ba. I'm Yasharala. I'm Yasharala.